Welcome back to Pharmacy Operation Basics. I'm Joey Mattingly, and today we're going to be talking about enhancing operations with technology. Today's learning objectives are to describe various applications of technology to advance pharmacy operation or workflow of a pharmacy, as well as, given a common pharmacy scenario, be able to demonstrate how technology can improve a pharmacy problem. So let's start with pharmacy automation. This is probably the most common thing that we think of when we think of technology in a pharmacy. We think of how many things have gotten automated. So we have electronic prescriptions now. Uh, many pharmacies, rather than the, than the physician or nurse practitioner writing a prescription on a piece of paper and that being hand delivered, if you will, to a pharmacy, um, they're just typing it in their computer and it's being electronically transmitted to the pharmacy. We also have electronic fax reception. Believe it or not, we still have a lot of systems that use faxes to communicate. And so um, what's often been implemented, if you are receiving a fax, rather than the fax coming through the uh, a, an old school fax machine that then has to still be scanned in, can we have an ele electronic fax reception where the actual fax comes in like an electronic prescription? These steps automate the data entry tasks that are happen at the very beginning of the workflow in a pharmacy. We also have imaging systems. So one of the first things that we do if, uh, if a prescription is handwritten or called in and, and transcribed down on a piece of paper is that we want to scan that in and get that automa automatically put into a, an electronic system for record keeping. It's a lot more efficient to find old pharmacy records searching through a, through a computer than it is to dig, dig through boxes. And believe me, I know I've dug through many a pharmacy records, uh, record boxes in my, in my career. The dispensing technology itself has also become highly automated. Rather than uh, pharmacy technicians or pharmacists having to count out every single order and going and grabbing a bottle and pouring it out on the blue tray that you often see whenever um, you, know, you see video of a pharmacy, we have a lot of technology where um, many fast-moving drugs are automatically counted and dispensed into, into their unit of use. Finally, another common area for automation is the point-of-sale system. How do we make it so that at the, at the cash register, at the pickup window, what, what can we do to automate those steps and make that, that transaction a lot smoother for, for a patient? When thinking about the technology that's used for the pharmacy, we want to think of how do we take raw data input that into an information system and then make that information useful, right? So if, if we're getting data from all sorts of different places, right? So maybe we're having prescriptions uh, hand delivered, uh, again, an old school prescription that's written down on a, on a prescription pad. Maybe we have prescriptions that have been telephoned in and the pharmacist or pharmacy technician where, where laws apply that have transcribed that, that called in prescription order. How do we then get that into an information system uh, so, that, so that it's in useful chunks? So pretty much all pharmacies these days are using some sort of electronic record keeping system or information system. So most pharmacies, one of the first things you're going to do when you, when you start a new pharmacy or start a new job as a technician, an intern, or a pharmacist, is you're going to learn their information system. How do they input data into that system? How does that data then spit out? prescription labels, uh, reports, other things that, that then become useful. How do you use that system um, you know, for all the information that you need? So one of the first steps that we learn when we train in a new pharmacy system is that data entry of a prescription order. This often includes information like uh, from the patient, patient information, name, date of birth, gender, maybe their insurance information. Then we'll have the drug information, the, the orders, the, the SIG, the, the other directions from the prescriber. We'll have the prescriber information. Maybe other data that, that can be more specific to the patient. Maybe the patient needs easy open lids. You'll see commonly things like waiter, non-waiter, and, and literally it's talking about is the patient waiting for the prescription in the pharmacy or are they coming back later? You also input things like the date, not only today's date, but when, is, when was the prescription prescribed? When did the, when did the prescription actually um, get ordered by the prescriber? And then often there'll be time stamps, times that you actually entered the prescription and then when the patient wants to pick it up. Now before we had computers, how would you calculate the number of prescriptions that your pharmacy filled in a given week? How would you determine which prescriptions that haven't been picked up need to go back on the shelf? 
Technology allows us to use more data points to manage these, these basic operations. We commonly use our, our, our information systems to help with our inventory utilization, seeing not only how many prescriptions we filled, but then what exactly was dispensed, what types of tablets, which NDC numbers, which specific products, what, prescri what products are we out of and need to reorder. I've been in many pharmacies where they weren't effectively using their information systems. They weren't updating the, the actual tablets on the shelf with what was in the computer system. So as you can imagine, they were manually having to do a lot of ordering. This was very inefficient. So how do we effectively use that computer system? Knowing the number of prescriptions filled, not just the, the raw number of prescriptions, but maybe even stratified by refills, new prescriptions, transfer, transfer prescriptions. If you've worked in a pharmacy, uh, outpatient pharmacy before, you'll know that there's often a lot more effort that may go into a brand new prescription, a brand new patient, than maybe someone who's just picking up a refill. We may also want to capture how long did it take that prescription to go along each of the steps in the pharmacy. Sometimes we call that the average wait time for a prescription. That allows us to see you know, how efficiently we're moving things forward. And that may also be stratified based on whether or not the patient said they were waiting for the prescription or, or is that something that, that is, is a, just a refill that someone's picking up at a later time. So often pharmacies will break it out that way as well. Let's dive into a specific pharmacy scenario, something that comes up quite a bit. I think about queuing, and this can be in an inpatient or outpatient, but um, inpatient typically we're, you know, we're thinking of orders that need to be then delivered up to the floor, whereas an outpatient we literally have a line forming out the door. So, so maybe it's easiest to think of an outpatient pharmacy. After a patient drops off a prescription, maybe they ask, you know, hey, I'll, I'm going to wait until it's ready. And so maybe they'll go sit in a waiting area or they'll go shop in the store if the, if the store has a bigger uh, storefront. And we refer to this waiting in line, per se, as, as queuing, you know, who's first. So queuing systems want to track things like when did the person come in, when did they arrive, when did they drop off their order. You know, what are the rules of the queue, right? Are there, are there waiters? Are there, do we have different levels of waiters? Do we have people who are super urgent and some that are maybe less urgent? Is there a specific time that you can put in the system to say that you've promised that the patient, that this prescription particular prescription will be ready in say 20 minutes or or maybe you said hey you know there's some additional challenges with this particular uh, prescription can we call you when it's ready like so what other rules do we have in our queuing system and, and there may be costs associated as well so not only cost not specifically cost of like the cost of the drug or anything like that or the cost of just the computer system itself but think about the costs that come up if you don't queue properly you know you might lose customers if if they, you know, they find out that, that their prescriptions aren't ready when, when you told them they would be. Or they you know, dropped off a long time ago and they definitely remember when they dropped off, but your queuing system isn't, isn't adequate enough to track those things. So what other costs may, may be? It may be worth the investment in putting into a, a sophisticated queuing system to avoid some other customer service problems. So let's walk through an example. So here we have four patients. The first patient is a regular customer who drops off a refill request for his blood pressure medication and says he'll come back in an hour. The second patient is a brand new patient. They have an antibiotic prescription that's for his daughter and he wants to wait. The third patient calls in and requests a refill over the phone and she says she's gonna pick up the prescription tomorrow when she's in town, so she must be traveling, right? So not as urgent. Patient number four is not a patient, actually. It's the physician that calls in a new medication for a new patient. So now you've got to enter that patient as well. But you have no idea when this patient is, you know, is the patient with the doctor now or what? But you don't really have any idea when the patient's going to be there to pick it up. The physician just calls in the prescription and wants that ready for the patient. So when we think about queuing, how do we address this problem? So you might rank each of these patients in a, in a way that you think, okay, we've got maybe a moderate priority with number one, so it's a refill, an hour, so maybe we'll call that moderate. Maybe it's uh, something that we got to make sure we get done because in, you know, in, in 55 minutes, you know, then it's only five minutes away for that patient to come in. So you want to make sure that you don't put it totally aside. The second and fourth patient, so our new patients dropping off antibiotic that wants to wait, that's certainly a high priority. They're physically waiting in the store. The fourth patient, you have no idea when the patient is coming, and I would argue that you probably want to treat that as a high priority and assume that 
hey, this person could come in any minute. You know, maybe the physician's calling, but the patient's already on their way. So it's one of those things that if you're able to have that prescription ready when the patient gets there, it might go a long way for that patient. And then patient three ends up being maybe the low priority request because you know that's going to be tomorrow. So so you could do that one after you take care of patient number one, and certainly you would do it after patients number two and four. So after your data entry step, if you've queued properly, you might see something like this. You might see the patient name, and again, I just have patients two, you know, two, four, one, and three. But you might have them, uh, you know, colored or highlighted. You know, your queuing system might show like a yellow or something that sort of makes those waiting prescriptions. You see how like under the pickup time, those are clicked to waiting, so maybe not a specific time associated. But that lets you know, hey, those are pretty, pretty uh, high priority. And then your queuing system should also really show what step, what, what's the status of the prescription. That way, anyone who logs into the system can look to see where is the prescription, who is, who is likely to have that prescription and working on it. And this allows you to then set time so that you know the prescriptions that need to be done today are going to pop up uh, before the ones that would need to be done tomorrow. And obviously, as those times come, so say as it as you approach 2:05 p.m. today, maybe the color goes from gray to yellow once you pass that time because hey, it's now past the time you promised the patient it would be ready. Queuing like this allows you to set priorities in your pharmacy of what work needs to be done when. It also allows all the pharmacy employees across the across the pharmacy to know what's going on who's where, what prescriptions are where, who are they with, who's working on them, about what time will they be done. That way, if the patient comes in, calls in, or contacts you and says, hey, is my prescription ready, you've got a quick answer. So let's review. Pharmacy technology systems help us take data points and make them useful. The technology can help us manage things like inventory, workflow, run reports, and much more. Specifically, things like queuing systems allow us to prioritize our workflow and improve our customer service. That concludes this video. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Any questions for public uh, discussion, be sure to put that out on Twitter. Be happy to engage with you on social media. If you're not in the class and would like to provide comments below that might be useful for the class, please be sure to do that within YouTube.